Hey everybody, welcome to the round 11 player ratings video. If you are new around here and you've never seen a player ratings video, I'm welcoming you to the player ratings and the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. Um, if you are returning, welcome back, you know the drill. For those that are new, basically what I like to do here is just start the conversation for every player that played on the day. Um, I give them a rating out of 10, uh, pursuant to their role in the team, standing in the side, experience, and, and what we expect from them. and and how they executed that. And then uh, you guys finish the conversation off in the comments. I'm gonna have a mid-season review video coming out later this week. Um, in there, I will show you all the uh, the tally for the Blue Abroad Player of the Year Award, I think we're gonna call it. Um, so yeah, your job in the comments is to really just make any edits that you deem are necessary. Just put your make your case in the comments below if the score needs to be higher or lower, and, and we'll go from there. So just remember, these are not really official. Um, I'm not right. I'm not wrong. I'm just you know, starting a discussion. Um, but yeah, look, it's uh, the final piece of the puzzle to the therapy after the disappointing loss. It is Tuesday at the time of filming this video. The pain lingers. You know, the lockdown compresses the pain and compounds it. And um, you know, we we must move on. Uh, we just we just must. You know, not going to lie. This is all fucking me up. But um, you know. Such is life. It's tough, you know. It is what it is. So let look. Let's move on. Uh, let's start as the team was named. We've got Stocker, we've got Jones, and we've got Newman. Now Stocker, uh, I gave him a pass mark for his game, young Liam. I think he's coming along nicely. Uh, strong intercept mark early in that first. He's he had that terrible shank kick in the first quarter as well, which almost cost us a goal. Luckily, the Swans, who um, you know had a shot on goal straight after it, uh, missed. Um, I thought his chase down tackle on Wicks in the second quarter was unreal. Um, I love he I loved his um, willingness to get into the face of his opponents. When Weedering was uh, sort of slung to the ground, he was in there flying the flag. He just does all those little things. And um, one thing about Stocker, and I get it, you got to do your, you know you got to sort of do your apprenticeship in the back line in this side and, and learn the defensive element to the game. And I guess that's what's happening with him. But him on Tom Papley, I don't think that it really ever should happen. I, I just don't think that's the move. We've got an inside midfielder in Stocker who want to teach defensive um, sort of mentality. And I just think you're putting him, you know, you're playing with his confidence, putting him on a, on a guy like Tom Papley. That's that's how I feel anyway. I don't think that's the move. I don't think that we should be doing that. Um, I'd like to see him now play a few more minutes in the midfield and, and really allow him to build some confidence there because that is his number one strength. Um, but I think he's going okay. I gave him a pass mark for his game. Jones, he was on Buddy. Um, I thought the first half was was really poor from Liam Jones. I thought he was just completely out of his depth. Um, you know, he gave away free to Buddy with four minutes to go in the second, and that's when I, I wrote the note down. He's just completely out of his depth. Buddy just has him mentally and in every facet. But the one thing you just love about Liam Jones is he just never gives up. You know, his first two contests on Buddy in the third quarter were wins. And I thought his second half made up for his first half. It was sort of a so-so a performance. At the end of the day, his opponents kicked three. Uh, I battled with giving him a five. I don't think for a guy in the leadership group, the way Liam Jones played overall, it's warranted to say that that's acceptable in a pass mark. So therefore, I gave him a four. But I do want to take note of the fact that he did have a pretty good second half and, and did respond and, and, you know, limited buddy, you know, in that second half. Newman... He was, uh, you know, that first goal that Sydney kicked, he was right behind Hayward for that. Um, one important moment was he took the hit from Buddy in the second quarter, 13 minutes, 30 to go, which was, I just still can't believe that Buddy hasn't been cited for that after Lockie Plowman was suspended. Um, but that's another issue. Newman, I gave him a pass mark as well. I gave him a five. I love him in the side. I think he structures us up so much better. Um, low key, we've really missed him and it's starting to show what he brings to the side. And I think he's got a, a different um, scope on, on his game at the moment. He's really playing like a bit more of a smarter footballer. Um, and so I just I just like seeing him in the side. Sadi, he was clean-ish early. He was. Um, he ended up with 15 touches. I need more from Adam Saad um, offensively. I, sorry, I would like to see more from Adam Saad offensively. I would love to see more from Adam Saad defensively. We've all seen the footage. David King's pointing it out. I have no issue with that at all. I think it's I think it's brilliant that these things get pointed out, um, and it's a bit of a bit of a reality check for Adam Sard at the moment. I think he's going through a little bit of a oh shit, hey, I'm 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 at the Carlton Football Club, and uh, you know there's some pressure here on me. You know he's he's paid well. 
you know, a lot of resources go to getting him into the club. Um, we've invested heavily into a player like him, and he needs to be better. And I think he's just going through. I think he and Williams are in a very similar situation. They're going through a real initiation phase of, oh, they're going to have to grow. They're going to have to be better than what they were at their previous clubs. And I just think Adam Saad is battling through that. I think it's a synergy thing. Uh, I think there needs to be a personal responsibility and accountability thing. For me, I see Adam Saad becoming the Bashar Hawley type player. You know, the real elder statesman, the experienced head, hopefully in a three-time premiership side for the Carlton Football Club. But I, I, that's not a pass mark for me. That's not acceptable for me from Adam Saad. He's so much better than that. So I gave him a four for his game. Weedering, he I liked what we did. And I understand the frustration with Levi being in the side. But what it allowed us to do is have Weedering free as the spare man. And now Weedering is a great one-on-one defender. But the reality is I think Weedering's best asset, which we can't forget about when he was drafted, was his interceptability and his ability to read the play. And I think we allowed him to do that in the first half. He just didn't have a good half. I thought his first half was, was poor. And I think by his own admission, he would say the same thing. No impact whatsoever. Um, I thought his second half was as good as what his first half was bad. He was, he was really solid. Um, he sort of evened up the, the ledger. I, I thought about giving him a five. I think a five is the move. But then with Liam Jones, it's pretty much the same principle. Um, so I gave Weedering a four because I hold Weedering to a higher standard than that. And uh, we can't have him go missing like he did in the first half. He's so important to us. And, and you know, obviously, he's, he's the general of the back line now. He, it's, it's Jacob Weedering is, is, for me, the, the guy that instructs everything that happens in that back line. It's not Sam Doherty anymore. It's Jacob Weedering. So I, I, I'm i really unsure. It was five. Now it's four. Maybe this is exactly why you're here because you will tell me in the comments how you think and we'll consolidate that and then I'll put a final score on the table. Zach Williams, I thought his first half, two and a half quarters are pretty good. Beautiful inside 50 to Jack Silvani in the first quarter with 11 minutes, 11 to go. His goal was beautiful. I, I just thought he started really well and it was like, okay, this is, this is it. Then he just seemingly fell away and just wish he had have gone on with it. And I don't know, is it fitness? I don't know what it was, but he just, he was, he was, he was right there. He was right there. He ended up with the 17 touches. I'm sorry, but he's a guy that we need more from. That's not, that's not going to cut it. I need, we need more from him. He's a star of this team. He's, he's, he's one of the best players in the team, you know, and he's just, he just didn't go on with it. Um, I don't want to bash the players, but I, I just I want more from Zach Williams because I know he can give us more. So I gave him a bare pass mark, but he was really getting on there. He was really pushing for a, a great game, and I don't know why what happened. I don't know why he stopped. I, 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 have, I have no answers. I just have questions. So that's that. Next up is Doherty, Cripps, and Cottrell. Doherty, after a month of just elite captain's football it was just it was just a, a downer game for him um he had you know at the 21 touches um you know he wasn't the worst player on the ground but you know obviously you know the, the praise that i've been giving him the extra praise i give him for being captain is goes both ways and i just thought the symbolic moment was the kick off the ground he missed it parker picks it up and goals with you know 349 to go in the first and it was just symbolic and it's just not doc uh, but the, the reality is he's had about probably five or six of those you know oh, what are you doing moments? Um, and it's hard because everything else he does is really good and all, he's almost perfect. Um, and he's, he's working through it. He's, he's, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's a man that I have full faith in, hand on heart, that he wouldn't have been sleeping thinking about that contest because he knows he sets the tone, he's the captain and it trickles down to the rest and it's disappointing. I don't like criticizing the players. I don't like being negative to the players, but you know, this isn't about their feelings. This is about winning. And I, I just th think Doherty is a guy that's going to inspire us to win with those courageous acts. And on this occasion, he, he wasn't able to do it. Um, I gave him a four for his game. I didn't think it was a, a pass mark for the captain of the football club. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I absolutely back him to bounce back and play well because he's had a fucking ripping month. And he's had a pretty good year as well. It just, it's been littered with a few moments of uncharacteristic moments, you know, and is he, is he doubting himself? Is he, I don't know. I, I don't know, but um, I back him to get better is the point of what I'm trying to say. So I gave him a four. Cripps, I think that was his best game of the year. I wanted to give him a 10, but I just felt like I couldn't bring myself to give anyone a 10 in this game. 
um, because, you know, they fell away and they shat the bed in the fourth. But um, oh, just some great moments that I've written down here. The great inboard kick to Jack Martin with seven minutes to go in the first. That's a sign of Cripps at his best when he's kicking the ball like that. Um, he just looked much better at the contest. He pinned Dawson in the middle of the ground in the second quarter with 9.16 to go. That was beautiful. Um, then he had these little uh-oh moment, the turnover with the handball. Sydney literally got a goal. Uh, Isaac Haney kicked it with five minutes 40 to go in the second. It was just, it just seems like when we make mistakes, we pay for them every time after we have such a good run of play. And it was unfortunate. Um, his second goal from the boundary, uh, well, his first goal, let's talk about it because it was the set shot from directly in front, which he's missed a lot of those. So that was important to get the confidence up and about. Then he kicked his second goal from the boundary after the, the in the back free kick, uh, which was beautiful. And then he kicks his third in the fourth. And he lived, look, he did his job. Uh, maybe I should give him a 10. I don't know. I've got it down as a nine. I'll let you decide in the comments if you think that that's, that's enough or if, you, if he should go to a 10. But it's just a relief to see Paddy Cripps playing with happiness and confidence and, and, and just playing well. And uh, ever since we had the news about him signing or agreeing to terms but not being official... He's been good. I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's, just, it's just a relief to not have to say, what's going on with Cripps? You know, is he okay? Like, it's just a relief. And I'm happy for him. And I hope that he can inspire his teammates to continue on. And I hope that we get the official announcement, you know, sometime soon. Cottrell, I actually thought very similar to last week. He was lively early. I think he had five touches in the first half. And then he didn't touch the ball apart from one time in the second. He didn't touch the ball until late in the third and then he had a little bit of a, a one, two, three moment to, to Harry Mackay, he, who missed the goal. Um, I struggle with Cottrell because I I understand you want to reward the guy that works hard like he does. But I just feel like when it comes to effort and, and will to, to impact and all of that, he's right up here. But when it comes to skill execution, there's like a limit to him. And I don't know if you just got to persist with it because the hard work will eventually have the skill increase. Uh, or do you have to punish the fact that his skill and his ability to win the ball just it's not enough right now for a wingman um, are we not looking for him enough do we not trust him enough is it Cottrell is it, is it the team I don't know but I, I found myself getting very frustrated and then he had that real he was streaming into in the midfield to going forward he kicks the ball nice and high and I'm just like Cots mate what are you doing son come on he's got all, he does all the hard work and then he undoes it with his 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 uncleanliness. He can butcher the ball at times, but I do love his endeavor. And you, you know, it's hard. You know, how do you how do you punish the endeavor? Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a full package. It's the skill execution combined with the will and the and the and the work rate. So I didn't give him a pass mark. I don't think you can give him a pass mark. I gave him a three for his game. I just think it wasn't good enough. Jack Martin um, early on, I thought he was really good. I thought, geez, he's the missing piece here. He's just the link in everything and. Listen, it's his first game in, what is it, eight or nine weeks. Uh, he just fell away. You know, I gave him a four for his game. I understand the circumstances around it. It was an important game for him, but winning the game is more important than Jack Martin playing in a game that means a lot to Jack Martin because there's going to be an Indigenous round every every year. Um, also, we celebrate Indigenous players every week. You know, not just every... I know that there's a Sir Douglas Nichols round where it's really gravitated, highlighted, but I think we as as Carlton supporters celebrate our Indigenous players every week. I mean, we, we, we love them and we cherish them. And um, I think the cheer squad do a good job of, of making sure that love and appreciation and um, acknowledgement is there every week. And I think the rest of us do that. And I just felt like, you know, we put, we put I don't know, were we desperate to win the game? Is that why we brought him in? It could be, it could be that as well. I just, over the course of the four quarters, seeing the way he fell away, I just felt like we shouldn't have played him. Um, Having said that, it's going to hold us in good stead for the rest of the season. He's played his game. He got through unscathed. You know, got West Coast this week. Hopefully, you know, he recovers well and, and, you know, we've got that full game under his belt. But it wasn't enough for me. For Jack Martin, he's a very, very good player. I gave him a four. Harry, uh, strong mark and goal early. And then strong mark and on the lead and another goal. 18 minutes, 10 to go in the in the second, I think it was. Huge mark in the third quarter with 8.30 to go. But he hit the post. Um, shocking miss in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes to go. Um, listen, I think Teague sum- summarized it perfectly. They asked about Harry and his kicking and, and Teague sort of said, well, hang on a minute. I mean, round two, you came after him. Apart from that, he's been pretty good. Okay, he's kicked three goals, five, but he's, he's going to have games like that. 
Um, Favola was the same. All the great forwards were the same, especially at his age. I think Harry's been fantastic. He's kicked three. Even when he's not kicking straight, he finds a way to kick the two or the three. And I, I think he did his job. Um, obviously, want him to kick straighter, kick better. You know, 3-5 should be 5-3. Yeah, really, that's what it should be. It isn't. I'm going to give him a seven, six, seven, six. Uh, help. Uh, I'm going to give him a six for his game. You can help me out there. Um, definitely thought he did his job, and um, you know he's battling as well. So I'll go with that. Gibbo. What's happened to him? Where is he? Where's Gibbo? Gibbo, mate. Come on. Where are you, son? Where are you, mate? Come on, mate. You're better than this. He's better than this, man. He's better than this. I don't know what's happened to him. I'm telling you. You know, obviously, we all watch these games closely every week. I don't think he's been the same since the Harbrow knock to the head. Really don't. Now, last week, I thought he showed signs against Hawthorne of getting back to his best. <clears throat> Just nowhere near it at the moment. He just can't seem to get that same impact he was giving us. He was he did his hamstring. Uh, I think it was in the, what was it? Uh, late in the second term, I think it was. I don't know. We had the six touches up until that time. I think it was the third by the time he was subbed, but I gave him a two for his game. Just apart from the long inside 50 kick to Harry in the second quarter with 14, 17 to go, I don't really remember too many moments of his where I, you know, took note of him and and it's disappointing because of how good I know he can be you know um, not good enough need more from him uh, so I gave him a two and I hope he can bounce back and, and, and find that form again because he he, he sparks us you know um, Eddie Betts Tom DeConing and Jack Silvani Eddie Betts beautiful goal in the first quarter vintage Eddie Betts thought he did his job uh, I mean at the end of the day what's he given us you know, we've had the, the nine touches two goals one I think that's absolutely what he's going to be giving us I gave him a six for his game Tom DeConing it's always good to see him back I thought he was a little quiet early in the game however you know the moment comes and that's the important thing there and he did kick his goal he had the seven touches one goal one um, you know he took quite a few ruck con- a few more ruck contests than last week I actually I know it's frustrating a lot of us are saying put him in the ruck why is Pitto rucking so much? I actually do like it. I think this is the way to do it. He's He is severely underdone in terms of compared to everyone else that plays on the field. Um, we also don't want to, you know, he's still a developing body. He is. He's a developing body. You can see when he does go into the ruck, however, his leap is just great. And his soft hands are great. So I think as the weeks go on, we're going to start seeing that handover happen. And I do like it for the long term. I think that's the smart play with him and his body. And I think we're managing him well. Um, the goal was important for me, for him. It was just, it might have not been a dominant game for him, but it was a, an important moment. He kicked it. Um, I gave him just a pass mark for his game. Definitely want to see more layers now, week to week, and uh, perfect test this week against West Coast. Jack Silvani, beautiful goal in the first quarter. Um, just seems to just give that effort that we love and appreciate. Um, I thought his game was okay. I thought he, along with a lot of, a lot of them, just faded away late. He had the 15 touches and a goal. Um, that's kind of the game that I need to see from Jack Silvani. Two goals would be amazing, but 15 touches, getting around the ground and providing an option was important. I think he will build off that. Hopefully no wacky injuries, just let him get some continuity. And I think he's going to continue on with the breakout season that I thought we were seeing from him early in the year. So I gave him a six for his game. Next up is Pitto, Walsh and Kerno. Pitto... I've really just got one note here. I'm just battling. He battles. He does his thing. You know, he goes all right. I gave him a pass mark. I've really struggled to find a lot to say about him. And that's that, 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 that's okay. Job doers are fine. Guys that are unassuming are fine. And he's an unassuming guy that just goes in there, does his job, battles and, and whatnot. He has a limitation, I feel. Um, but he doesn't try and do more than what he's, his limits are. And that's something I think needs to be appreciated with him. So uh, I gave him a six for his game. While she... Beautiful assist to Zach Williams for the goal. He's done everything right for the most part in this game. He was definitely uh, targeted in this game, but it, you don't stop him. 33 touches, um, you know, didn't use the ball as well as what he has in the last few weeks or the, the last month, but he's coming along nicely. I gave him an eight for his game and, you know, he seemingly gives me a smile and, and us a smile every single week. So uh, love his work. Ed Kerno, he was in, I thought his first quarter was great. Well, really his first half he was everywhere, in and under, 
And then again, he just stopped. I think he was... I feel like he was almost statless in the fourth quarter. I don't remember him touching the ball that much and just nowhere to be seen. I, I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know. Um, just... It was very uncharacteristic. He doesn't go missing like that often, but this time he did. You know, he lays the tackles. He's laid five, but I don't know. I gave him a six for his game, but uh, really could have been a lot more because he was he was looking ominous. Um, the bench: Fogarty, Casbolt, Setterfield, Owies, and then we'll talk about Murph briefly. Fogarty, he battled, but just on the lower end of the scale. He's going through a little bit of a peak in a trough. Um, last week was didn't get a lot of the ball, but he tackled well. Uh, this week, he didn't get a lot of the ball, tackled not as much as last week. And for that reason, it's a four. He's he's sort of just sort of right above, right below um, uh, sea level at the moment. But, I, you know, he, he's going okay. He, he's a young player, developing player, new player in the system, uh, the Carlton system. And, uh, yeah, he, he, I, I back him to continue and, 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 and bounce back. So gave him a four for his game. Levi started on McLean. Um <laughs> The story of Levi, um, the moment of Levi, it's its just so telling. He, beautiful mark in the third quarter with 13.40 to go behind the ball. And you're thinking, well, I'm thinking, beautiful. Love seeing Levi behind the ball. I love it. Then he kicks it out of bounds of the full. <laughs> and he just, <laughs> you love, I love him. I love Levi. I, I Honestly, I say it, every, I, I do love him, but it's, it's, this is not about feelings. This is just not, I just... I just struggle. I just struggle to watch him play. I just do. I, I, I don't know what upside he provides for the future of the club. I almost understand him being in defense this week because, you know, we tried to get Weedering, Weedering free. But, you know, there's just there's just the limitation. And I almost want to have the up... I almost want to have a honey in his spot who will give us a spark of energy because I don't think Levi's giving us a spark of energy anymore. Um, when he does kick goals, he gets the boys up and about. He's that type of cult figure, but we're just not. I, I'm just not. I thought he was in the side as a ruck relief for for, for Pitto, and then when Tom's come back into the side, he's still playing. I, I just don't know. And I also thought that he came out of the side to be managed because the body was was struggling. He's getting injections in the knee. He's getting fluid drained. So I thought, give him a couple of weeks, let the mobility come back. But the mobility isn't back after a week, and I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know what to do. I gave him a four for his game. Um, but, you know, I'll leave it there. Setterfield, uh, good pressure on Florent to force the out-of-bounds in the full first quarter, eight minutes, 30 to go. Beautiful kick to Harry in the second with 18-10 to go, which actually set up Harry's goal. Um, he's get, he was. I noticed him getting on the end of some handballs, and he... I said last week I'd rather him be a little bit more in and under, um, but he's adding something over the last few weeks where his running patterns are a little better and he's getting on the end of some balls and kicking long, and I do enjoy it. Um, good F, second effort uh, in the third quarter with six minutes to go. He was just unlucky not to get rewarded for it. Um, I, I liked his game. People, Is he becoming a whipping boy? People, I, I loved his game, actually. I thought he was one of our better players on the day. I mean, he's had 16 touches, so we need a little bit more there. Um, 10 of the 16 have been contested. He's gained 414 meters, which is not really a hallmark of his game. And I just think he's just incrementally getting better than last week. And I think if we just continue to play him in the position that he's playing at the moment, I think he'll just get better and better as the year goes on. He, he, he reminds me... I think Nick Graham had this attribute um, where you got to get continuity in his position. He just gets better every week. I, I just watch out for Setterfield. I, I think he's I think he's coming back up. There's a, a little bit of a dip in the early part of the season. He got dropped, and I think he's starting to come back up now, and it's good to see. We really need him to emerge. You know, and He's got to be pushing that 20 possession uh, type game because that's what he was doing last year. He was adding those tackles, and you know he was our most improved player. I don't think he's reached that yet. I think his confidence took a bit of a dip, but I think, and just keep an eye out. Trust me, he's starting to come up. Um, I've got a lot of faith in Setterfield. I think he's, I think he's good for us. Matt Owies, this is low key our story of the year. His ability to impact games and say force me or us to say you can't drop him. You just can't. Like he gives the effort, the physicality's there. Nine touches and a and a behind. We we definitely want him to hit the scoreboard. Um, Five tackles, I think it was, in the end. Um, his pressure and body work are there. The coaches must love him because he's doing a job. So 
Um, for that reason, I gave always a six. Murph, he came on, you know, later in the game, had the five or six touches. Uh, there was the passage of play where he got the, he kicked it, ran on, got the handball in space, kicked it, hit two targets in a row. And I'm thinking, are the coaches not seeing this? Like this, this is where the guy does his best work in the middle of the ground. And I just thought there was an opportunity to get him some more midfield minutes in this game in the fourth when we needed a bit of a spark. It is what it is. Um, you know, uh, would have been very disappointing. I kind of, I can only imagine what it's like this year because it's different to last year. There is no sub. This year, it's like you've been dropped, but you've got to be the sub. You've got to bring the energy when you come on. You can't be a bad, bad energy on the, on the, on the, you know, on the ground. Even though you would be disappointed that you drop because this is, you know, you take pride in your career. And Murph's never been dropped, number one draft pick. Um, so I thought his energy was was good. Um, I'm, I don't, I can't give him a rating. Ugh, there's not enough. There's not enough. Uh, game time to, for me to give him a rating but um, I thought he should have started and I think he'll start this week for, for Gibbons and that's kind of how it should have been against against Sydney but anyway those are my ratings I feel better that's it the closure of round 11 is done we can move on I feel better already I really do um, thank you thank you all for your contribution to this channel as a reminder um, it really does help me and if it helps one person with, um, you know, just getting through week to week and the losses, then I think this channel's done its job. Um, but yeah, I really do appreciate all of your input. Let's chat about it in the comments. If you think any of the ratings need to be adjusted, please just let me know. They'll be changed. Don't worry. And um, we'll go from there. Where do we go from here? We'll talk about it in the mid-season review video. Nice long one. And um, yeah, I look forward to that. So with that, speak to you soon. Stay safe for those of you in Victoria and go the Mighty Blues.